The articles that Mr. McGillard had deposited in Winniebank's pawnbrokery are in intimately related with the omnibus case, the trial of which was heard, heard in this courtroom two months ago. Yes, and I remember this young lady being brought before me in the trial as well. That's right, my lord. Her testimony helped to establish the innocence of the defendant, Mr. McGillard. The omnibus case was intriguing, to say the least. And now, here we, all, here we all are again. The same players in the trial facing each other once more. A twist of fate, perhaps, my Nipponese friend. Allow me to recap the events of two months ago. An old brickmaker was stabbed to death in an omnibus running along London's winter streets. Apart from the victim, there was only one other person in the carriage, Mr. McGilded. Naturally, he was the prime suspect for the murder. But as the trial progressed, another possibility emerged. That the murder, in fact, took place above the defendant's head on the roof deck, with the body then being dropped through the skylight into the carriage below. It was Miss Lestrade whose testimony brought that possibility to light. In the time of the incident, at the time of the incident, Miss Lestrade was concealed under a seat in the carriage, hoping to pick the pockets of unsus unsuspecting passengers. Then, immediately after the trial, having been acquitted of the murder, Mr. McGilded died in this very courtroom in the most extraordinary of circumstances. A mystery that remains unsolved even now, two months on, as indeed does the omnibus murder itself. Be that as it may, I recall neither the disco nor the small box being mentioned in the course of this of those proceedings. Miss Lestrade. Would you tell the court now, please? What really happened in the omnibus two months ago, I mean. I don't know what you mean. I already said all of what I know. And what about everything you told us yesterday from inside your prison cell? Please, Miss Lestrade, this is extremely important. B but Remember, little girl. If it transpires that you willfully withheld information in the trial two months ago, the Home Office will seek to, to prosecute you for perjury. And naturally, you will lose all credibility as a witness. Also, let's face facts, you have little credibility to lose. Vinny, don't listen to him. Please, you have to trust Runo now. We are on your side. Alright then, I will talk. It's the right choice, Gina. Well, it would seem that my learned friend is hell-bent on bringing the entire courtroom down about his ears. So be it. I must confess that I'm struggling to understand what on earth is happening here. However, it would appear that Mr. McGillard's pawn articles and that extraordinary case of the omnibus harbor secrets of which we have been hitherto unaware. So, Miss Lestrade, you will now give your testimony before the court about the events of two months ago. You will reveal the truth, a comedy sorely lacking in your original statements. This is it then. Everything's going to come out. Like Von Sieg said. This could bring the whole courtroom down about my ears, but as a lawyer, I'm prepared to take that risk. Proof is that Brickmaker Cuff was in the cabin of the omnibus the whole time. When the Irishman dragged me out from under the seat, I saw the disc on the floor. All of a sudden, I heard a scream from over me, at, and that pair on the roof deck went off to call the slops. That's when McGilded slipped the driver something to, to do a run to the pawn shop around about. He threatened me not to snitch, not to say nothing to no one about what I've seen or heard. Good grief, this is outrageous. What you've just told the court bears almost no resemblance to your testimony two months ago. As you say, my lord. 
then, then there's every chance I may have adjudicated an arrow in MacGilded's trial. It sounds very much to me as if the man deliberately deceived the Discord in an effort to cover up the most wicked of schemes. Without doubt, your lordship is correct. A great injustice was done in this courtroom two months ago. The actions of the accused in that trial of this witness and of my learned friend are entirely inexcusable. Yeah, wrong. The lot of ya. Mr. Nara Oro, the lawyer there, he didn't know nothing about it. I don't think so, or we really expected to believe that. He really stitched everyone up, didn't he? What an operation to get the man of Scott free. Oh, forgivable, stop. The lies have to stop, stop. Yes, the defense made a terrible error of judgment. I intend to take full responsibility and suffer whatever consequences are deemed appropriate. However, it's imperative that the court allows the witness to elaborate on her testimony, because the true significance of McGillard's pawn articles must be brought to light. Very well, my learned student friend. Given the depths of calamity you have just blanched yourself into, this may well be worth hearing. Words fail me, this situation is utterly deliberate. He blew the... Whatever. Mr. Nardo. <laughs> yes, my lord. I will see decide upon your fate following the conclusion of this trial. Of course, my lord. Namely, Mr. Nardo. Now, counsel, proceed with the cross examination. And you were hiding in the cabin at the time as well, weren't you, Ms. Lestrade? If I remember rightly, in the storage compartment underneath one of the seats. Yeah, that's right. It's pitch black under there, so you can't see nothing at all. Now, in your testimony two months ago, I feel certain that you claimed Mr. McGillard was the sole passenger, did you not? False testimony, my lord. That's... that's what he told me I had to say. But it's important that you tell us the truth now. Were Mr. McGilded and the victim acquaintance? Acquaintances? I don't know. But I did hear them talking a lot. What were they talking about? Well, I couldn't hear too well, but if I had to say... I think it was about money or something. They kept talking about buying and not buying. Perhaps business dealings of some kind? Well, anyway, they got louder and louder. It started to sound like a proper fight. I was pretty scared by then, I hardly dared to breathe, and then, all of a sudden, I heard a noise like someone kneeling over on the floor, it was blooming loud and all. And I believe you let out an involuntary scream. Yeah, that's what gave me away. Okay. What's the disc you saw this disc? Yeah, I reckon it probably was. It was right next to the cuff lying on the floor. Could this disc have belonged to the victim perhaps? I don't know, but McGilded picked it up pretty smartish. And then he set the cuff with the knife in his belly up on the seat. What did he say to you at that time? He told me not to say a word about what I seen or heard to no one. About the disc and all. I was dead scared. The way he was looking at me I thought... If I didn't go along with it, I would get stuck with that knife too. Then he started asking me a lot of questions, like what my name was and where I lived and that he asked me about being a driver too. But after a while, what had happened in the carriage was noticed. Yeah, that's right. First there was a kind of rapid noise. There were two gentlemen occupying the seats on the roof deck, right? That's right. They must have looked down through the skylight and noticed the cove with the knife in its gusts. 
When they screamed, the driver pulled up the horses and Megilda got me out of sight. Out of sight? Where? Back under the seat where I started off. Once the carriage came to an halt, the two cops from the roof ran off to fetch the slops. If they immediately left to fetch the police, it would appear they were entirely unrelated to the incident. So that left Magilla the driver and you still at the scene. Yeah, only the driver didn't know I was there because I was under the seat. I heard the cabin door open and the voice from outside. The driver, yes, he also testified in the trial, I believe. A fellow who went by the name of Beppo, if memory serves. What did McGilded and the driver say to each other? I don't know what happened and stuff like that mainly. That pawn shop obviously being Winnie Banks on Baker Street. Just a moment, Counsel. Do, do you mean to tell me that the driver gave false testimony in the trial as well? Perhaps the exertion to the pawnbrokery slipped his mind when he was in the stand. Indeed, Lord Von Zeeks. McGilda took off his coat and gave it to the driver. He folded it up all carefully like before handing it over. When I saw him do that, I remember thinking, that coat and what's in it has got to be worth a few bob. Yes, she never was sure that this must be worth more than Mr. Winniebank was suggesting, wasn't she? I remember her quibbling with him over the price that afternoon at the palm brokery. The driver looked pretty happy when Gilded flashed some brass in his face, even running off at the lick. Then the buck brother called to me and told me to come out from the drag's cabin. Threatened you? How exactly? He told me I would only be able to scarp her if I did exactly what he said. Which included giving false testimony in court a month ago. Yeah, that's it. And there was one other thing he said. Which was... He told me I would have to hang on the ticket from the pawn shop and make sure not to lose it. The ticket? Well, I never... Said that if he didn't show up to get the ticket of me before two months passed, I had to go to the pawn shop and pay the money to keep it in lock, to stop it being forfeited. He left me with some brass to pay for it. But really, why on earth would Mr. McGillard have done such a thing? Depositing his overcoat with a pawnbroker before the arrival of the police, it makes no sense at all. There would seem to be only one logical explanation, my lord. What McGillard had the driver to, to pose it at Windy Banks was something he didn't want the police to see. Something very important that he needed to hide at all costs. Anyway, after that he let me go, so I left it before the copper showed up. Well done, Gina. It can't have been easy to tell the truth like that. Ginny's really put her faith in you, Runo. Yes, and to thank her she will have to face a charge of perjury once this trial's over. So I need to use the time we have now to get as much information out of her as possible. It's time to really go for it. Press her on every statement. I... I suppose I should. Oh, and another thing. What's that? Take a look at those two. Isn't it strange that they've been whispering to each other the entire time? Yes, that is strange. It looks like they're having a secret discussion about something. I'm not sure I'm completely comfortable with that. I wonder if there's anything I can do about it. Okay, aber ich habe doch jetzt gerade schon über nachgefragt, soll ich das nochmal machen? Ähm, ich werde das jetzt überspringen, weil wir haben das ja schon alles angeklickt. Ich weiß jetzt nur nicht, was mir das bringen soll. Ähm, weil wir haben das jetzt gerade schon alles durchgenommen. Ich weiß jetzt nicht, warum das nochmal machen soll, weil wir haben jetzt nicht wirklich Beweise. Ich gehe mal stark davon aus, dass wenn wir eben nochmal alles fragen, dass wir ähm, irgendeinen von den beiden dann hier fragen können. Oder dass die irgendeine Reaktion von sich geben. Das ist jetzt so das, was mir dazu einfallen würde. Deswegen werde ich das jetzt einfach alles überspringen.
Ups, ne, halt, 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 halt. Ähm. Okay, gut. So, dann hier und das angreifen. Okay. Ich das hatten wir alles schon. Okay, Moment. Weißt du, was wir jetzt einfach machen? Wir, wir, wir sprechen die beiden jetzt einfach mal an. Is there something you would like to share with the court, Inspector Gregson and Mr. Graydon? Inspector, Mr. Graydon! Probably you trying to give me a heart attack. You have been whispering to each other for quite some time now. Tell us, what is the discussion about? Discussion with this fella? Pull the other one, Sunshine. You think I've got anything to talk about with a shady gent like this? Ich glaube nicht, dass der... Vielleicht ist das so ein undercover agent oder sowas. And I have nothing, and I have nothing to say to this uncouth detective after he deprived me of that disc that was rightfully mine. They've clearly been talking the entire time I've been cross-examining Gina. It's as if they've been negotiating. Thank you, Miss Lestrade. Thank you, Council. I've heard enough. I believe we now have a reasonable understanding of what actually trans transpired on the omnibus. It would appear on that night two months ago a negotiation was taking place on the omnibus. A negotiation cons concerning this disc. However, matters did not run smoothly. When the parties and Wolf began to quarrel over price, McGilda took what he wanted by force, at the expense of the other man's life. Which proves my point. The disc is clearly extremely valuable in some way. Also, I don't understand why as yet. And two days ago, precisely two months after the omnibus incident, McGilded's code and its contents were due to be forfeited. I didn't know what I should do with the ticket. I mean, the cough died right after Israel. I knew that. So you decided you would try to claim the articles as your own. Why not? Eh, they were only gonna be forfeited. Why shouldn't I have got them? Anyway, you can't blame me for thinking about it. Thinking ain't no crime. Miss Lestrade, it would appear Mr. McGillard was prepared to kill in order to take possession of this disc. Do you know why that would be? I, I ain't got a clue. But I reckon it must be worth a fair bit of brass. He was probably gonna sell it. And you can't blame me for thinking that. Thinking ain't no crime. My lord, the evidence your lordship requested has been located and is ready for the court's inspection, sir. A mysterious little box, deposited by Matilda two months ago. There is no doubt in my mind that it's a key piece in this far-reaching puzzle. To be continued. Okay, wir sind noch nicht durch. Es steht noch eine weitere Verhandlung an. Ich bin gespannt, wie die ausgehen wird. Ähm, gut, die Wahrheit ist raus. Ja, also was wirklich jetzt passiert ist äh, vor zwei Monaten, was wirklich bei diesem ähm, Fall mit der Kutsche ähm, passierte, was McGilded alles getan hat. Aber ich verstehe es. Ich, ich, ich will endlich, oder ich verstehe immer noch nicht, wieso diese Sachen so wichtig sind, weil wir eben noch nicht genau wissen, was ist denn jetzt wirklich an dieser Musikbox dran, was war an dieser Box drin, wir wissen das alles noch nicht. Und ich will endlich wissen, warum das alles so wichtig ist, was mit McGilded los ist, ähm, was da so wichtig war, warum er dann umgebracht wurde oder warum er vielleicht auch nur einfach seinen Mord vorgetäuscht hat, das kann ja auch sein. Ähm, ich hoffe, dass wir da wirklich jetzt endlich im nächsten Teil der Verhandlung endlich Antworten auf diese ganzen Fragen bekommen, weil ich wirklich wissen möchte, endlich, was da jetzt los ist, was Sache ist und warum das alles so wichtig ist und warum Gregson auch diese ganzen Sachen haben will, wer dieser Graden wirklich ist, weil der ist auch ein bisschen suspicious die ganze Zeit. Und ähm, ja, da hoffe ich, dass wir 
im äh, nächsten Part einige Antworten bekommen werden. Hier gibt es jetzt aber erstmal einen Cut. Ich bedanke mich ganz herzlich fürs Zusehen. Hoffe, ihr hattet Spaß und wenn ihr mögt, sehen wir uns sehr, sehr gerne im nächsten Part wieder. Bis dahin. Ciao.